Welcome to the Steve Wilmot Show with the Shammy Redskins head coach Steve Wilmot. I'm Sean Lerman. This show brought to you by Faulkner View at GMC Cadillac and Aria Health. Shammy coming off of a big win at Downingtown West, 42 to 14. Redskins now 3 and 0 on the season as they get set to take on Council Rock North at home at Heartbreak Ridge on Friday night. You can watch that game video stream live at WBCB1490.com. Coverage starts at 6.45. Coach, let's talk about that Downingtown game. I guess so the offensive game plan, you didn't tell me this before the season, I didn't realize it was just going to be 70-yard touchdown pass after 70-yard touchdown pass. That seems to be a theme through these first few games. Uh, well, I mean, you know, sometimes that happens when uh, you when a team plays man coverage on you, sometimes your guy can get behind their guy. You know, when we play zone coverage teams, a lot of the passes are going to hit underneath. Uh, but going into the season, our, our goal was, you know, whenever we see man co uh, coverage, you know, we feel like we have some guys with some speed, uh, and, and we're going to, you know, try to get behind them. Zach Treadway obviously showed no signs of that injury that he suffered against Penridge. Six catches, over 100 yards, looked really good. So what did it mean to have Treadway back in a lot. It's it's a whole nother dimension. Uh, you know, we feel good about our wide receiver core in general. Uh, you know, we have a, a tenth grader who kind of backs up uh, Zach, and we feel good about him. We think he's going to be a real good player next year. Um, and he does play. Uh, you know, when when Zach's out there for a long uh, defensive. Uh, you know, stint out there, you know, we, we, we get him a couple reps, but he just brings a whole other dimension to the offense because him and Mason are just on such the same page. Uh, his long touchdown, uh, he was just supposed to uh, run a slant route, um, and then him, and then you know, he knew it was a certain type of, of soft coverage in the back where he kind of converted it to a, uh, the, uh, to a fade. Um, and, you know, like it wasn't called, and I definitely have no problem with Zach doing it. It's an adjustment that we talk about uh, with Kevin Kelly uh, and Ray Jones, and two guys that work with Mason and Zach. It's something that we talk about daily. Um, and, you know, and, they, and, and Zach did that. He hit the slant, and then he converted it to a, to a fade route based on the coverage. Uh, and, you know, Mason uh, hit him, and, uh, you know, it worked out well. So he just brings a whole other dimension to him. Let's talk about the running game a little bit. Will Doggo was having a, an incredible game before he left with an injury late in the third quarter. Then Mike Crescenzo comes in and, and Ryan O'Connor towards the tail end as well. And those guys seem to do a pretty nice job as well. I think that speaks to what the offensive line did against Downing Town Yeah, I met, we met with the offensive line yesterday and we watched the film and I had it all graded out. And so far the offensive line is progressing from week to week. You know, there, it, was, it was a... It was, it was a very positive film session. Uh, you know, a couple guys did uh, a couple of real good things. AJ Sanko, uh, a, a senior for us, a senior center. I mean, he he's what he's doing right now. He is just really playing at a high level. I know we all see Zach and we all see Mason, uh, but AJ really directs traffic in the middle of that offensive line. Uh, Eddie Perry, uh, you know, delivers a big punch in there, and so does Chris Wilson. Uh, at the tackle spot, but uh, you, a lot of times you don't see all the really good things that they're doing. But uh, you know, AJ and Eddie are this is their third year starting on the offensive line, and and they're they're just really doing a nice job. And as far as the running backs themselves, I thought when, when Mike Crescenzo got in there, I, I thought he made the most of those opportunities. Yeah, he's he's a very capable running back. Um, he's really come a long way uh, since we started camp. Um, and yeah, we, we uh, I don't. My game plan week in and week out isn't run will 30 times a game. We did that uh, you know, last year a few times, and that's just not what's best for him. That's not what's best for our team. I don't mind rushing the ball 30 times in a game, uh, you know, but we, we need to get some other guys in there and take a little bit of the load off Will. Uh, and I think Mike and even Ryan uh, gives us a good uh, opportunity to do that. All right, Coach, let's talk about the other side of the football, holding Downingtown West to 14 points. What, do you, what did you see out of the, uh, the Redskins' defense? Uh, it's still a work in progress. Uh, you know, I think um, there, were, there were 10 possessions by Downingtown West. There were seven three and outs. But, you know, they, those three, you know, those three ones where we let them drive, you know, there's mistakes. But, again, there's, there's four young linebackers in there, and there's – some inexperienced defensive linemen. I thought our secondary held up like it like it usually does, um, but you know it, it's still you know all we're looking to do from week to week on offense and defense is just get 
better and better and better. Um, in some spots a little bit better, in some spots a lot better. So it's, 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 it's a work in progress, but as those guys get more and more experience, uh, I think it's going to uh, come together even better. The Chamonix Redskins, again, a 42-14 to win over Downingtown West to start the season 3-0. When we come back, we'll talk about Nishamni's upcoming matchup at home against Council Rock North. Back with more after this, this is the Steve Wilmot Show, presented by Aria Health and Faulkner View at GMC Cadillac. ER Express is the newest online reservation system for patients in Bucks County with non-life-threatening illnesses or conditions to reserve a time online to be treated at Aria's Fast Care, Urgent Care, or emergency departments. ER Express streamlines evaluations so patients are treated more quickly, and best of all, it holds your reservation while you're in the comfort of your own home. Please remember, patients who experience major injuries and traumas should always go immediately to the emergency department. Reserve your spot online now with ER Express. Visit ariahealth.org slash ER dash express. That's ariahealth.org slash ER dash express. If you are looking for a new car, where do you go? Faulkner Auto Group at 4427 Street Road in Trevos is where to go. For the best deals in Bucks County for all of your new or pre-owned cars, trucks, or SUVs, go to Faulkner Auto Group. It is always Faulkner to be sure. You can also always go to www.faulknerautogroup.com. Just remember, this year, it's Faulkner Auto Group for your new car or truck. 4427 Street Road in Trevos to be sure. Faulkner Auto Group. 215-364-7720. Faulkner Auto Group, a proud supporter of the Chamonix High School football. Sandy's Beef and Ale has been serving famous hand-carved roast beef sandwiches since 1967. Sandy's Beef and Ale is located in the Woodburn Square Shopping Center next to the Oxford Valley Mall. Stop in anytime for not only the roast beef sandwiches, but also the patty, the tailgater, and the Cuban. Family and friends have been coming to Sandy's Beef and Ale since 1967. 2028 Old Lincoln Highway, the home of the hand-carved sandwich. Princeton University football is back starting on Saturday, September 17th when the Tigers take on Lafayette at 5 p.m. at beautiful Princeton Stadium. It's also fireworks night, so bring the whole family for a day of fun at one of the nation's most beautiful on-campus football stadiums. The Tigers return both of their quarterbacks and have several returning defensive players. Single game tickets are just $10 and season tickets for all five home games just $40. This year, the Tigers' home schedule includes rivals Penn and Harvard, plus Brown and Cornell, and the opener on September 17th at 5 p.m. is against Lafayette, followed by Fireworks Night. To order and for more ticket information, go to GoPrincetonTigers.com. That's GoPrincetonTigers.com. Welcome back to the Steve Wilmot Show, presented by Falk Review at GMZ Cadillac and Aria Health, and the Chamonix Redskins head coach, Steve Wilmot. I'm Sean Lerman. Shamney getting set to take on Council Rock North this Friday. We'll begin coverage with the Trentonian pregame show. Video streamed live at WBCB1490.com at 6.45 p.m. You can also watch every Nishamini game this season on the TVs at Sandy's Beef and Ale. Coach getting set to take on Council Rock, now getting into the league schedule and opening things up with that league schedule at home. Got to be good to get back to the home fans. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you know, in the last two years, uh, I've really liked our focus on away games, but obviously home games is what, what uh, you know, what the kids work for all year is those home games, you know, their family, their friends, um, you know, they, they come out and cheer them on, and it, it's a real special atmosphere here at Michigan. Council Rock North, a, a program that's had a lot of success in the past, quarterbacks like Brandon McElwain, who was there and is now doing great things in college, but a new head coach this year. And uh, what do you expect to see out of the, uh, the Council Rock offense? Uh, the Council Rock offense actually evolved a lot from uh, week one to week two. Uh, they, they, have, they have a really good looking line. Um, yeah, the first week they kind of just lined up um, in I formation, our, our old I formation. And they ran a lot of the same plays that, that we were to run when we were an I formation offense. Um, going from week one to week two, I see that they kind of spread it out a little bit. Um, they, they have a real speedster um, who, who, who runs a speed sweep for them uh, out of that formation. Um, and yeah, and they, they make no uh, bones about it. They want to run the ball, and, and they have some offensive linemen that can really you know, get into you. 
um, they have some some big some big rascals on that offensive line. So would you say then that, that sort of puts a little bit of extra pressure on the defensive front for you guys? Yeah, you know we're we're counting on our defensive line to do their job, uh, which is get knocked back on the offensive line. So you know it's going to be a physical game. So we're going to have to roll some people on the defensive line, and we're just counting on our linebackers to to make their reads and, and be in the right spot at the re at the right time. As far as the other side of the ball, what are you going to expect to see out of the defense for Council Rock? Uh, they run a 4-4 four, four front. Uh, they run a lot of zone coverage. Um, so I'm not sure if you're going to see a lot of those long, long passes because they run a, a zone coverage uh, underneath. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to establish uh, a run game, but you know, there's, you know, a, a lot of times we're in spread sets this year, and and you know they, they have more people on the defensive front that than we can block, um, and they're big. They're big up front. So I'm just hoping to establish some sort of run game. And then uh, you know, and then have Mason just kind of spread the ball around, and 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 hopefully we can get some high percentage passes. I think that's something that we've seen over these first couple of weeks is that a lot of different receivers have caught the ball, a lot of different running backs, tight ends. It seems like just about everyone's getting involved on the offensive side. Yeah, I think I said this last week. Um, our goal is to to use the whole field, and I said it last year, but I didn't have the offense in to really do it. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in the off season, and, and I'm just, we're just trying to figure out a way to, to use the whole field. And I, I think we've done a pretty good job with that uh, in the, the first three weeks. So playing against a 4-4 defense with Council Rock, do you expect them to bring a lot of pressure? Do they mostly drop, drop those guys back into zone and just rush forward? They, uh, they bring a little pressure from time to time. Um, they have one package where they're always going to bring pressure. Um, not as not not like you've seen not blitzing like you've seen the last two weeks with uh, at least what they've shown on film so far, uh, you know Penridge and Danicktown West really challenged the line of scrimmage with their blitzing. Um, Council Rock North will blitz, uh, but they don't make a living out of it. All right, Coach. This is the the Steve Wilmot show. The Shamany Redskins head coach Steve Wilmot. The Shamany getting set to take on Council Rock North Friday, six forty five p.m. Watch live at WBCB1490.com. I'll be on the call. Looking forward to that one, Coach. I'll see you there. All right. Thank you.